Hello, pet parents, and welcome to another episode of Natural Pets TV. I'm joined by Dr. Ken, Dr. Jody, and Dr. Patrick. Arthritis is such a big topic that so many pets are suffering with these days. Dr. Patrick, where do you start, and what are some of the things that you advise pet parents to know about? Well, it's, a, it's a, certainly a disease that can affect pets both young and old, really regardless of your life stage, your overall health. It's something that can really be very uh, quality of life compromising to pets, cats, dogs, other species. The basic is that arthritis is just joint inflammation and joints could be uh, inflamed. Your finger joint could be inflamed because you sprain your finger. Hopefully that inflammation resolves with uh, mobility restriction, maybe some cold compressing initially and warm compressing and possibly medication if needed. But if you don't have resolution of an inflammation joint over time surfaces become rough and irregular and then that's going to compromise the range of motion of the joint the overall mobility of the pet the owner is going to become much more concerned at that point and um, you're kind of kind of think of this like if you're rubbing your palms together and your palms are smooth and you're just going like this you're not going to create inflammation but if you're rubbing your knuckles together like this that's what that's like what happens when you have a joint that's that has become irregular and that's when you have osteoarthritis and that's actually what we see on an x-ray. Um, you could take an x-ray at any point when you have an inflamed joint and you might not see anything that looks abnormal. So you might not think the pet has arth arthritis even though they're showing clinical signs of it. But when you have more advanced changes in those joint surfaces become abnormal, that's what we actually see on x-rays. And that's when it has become much more advanced and it's very hard to resolve at that point. It just becomes about management with <coughs> medications, lifestyle modification, um, supporting the body with supplements, herbs, doing acupuncture, chiropractic, physical rehabilitation, possibly surgery. There's so many things that go into the whole picture of arthritis management. I always like to take a multimodal approach where we're not just using one thing. We're trying to think about collectively doing everything together, taking a holistic approach. Is that how you Absolutely. handle arthritis in your practice? Absolutely. Okay. Um, what I see a lot is often the first resort is to use a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug to just suppress that inflammation in chronic arthritis. And uh, unfortunately, what happens with that over time is it actually damages the cartilage in the joint. So initially, it makes you feel great and it helps your pet and you like to see that result, but you don't want to stick with using only that long term. And so bringing in those other modalities um, there are a variety of different kinds of glucosamine products, hyaluronic acid, um, using enzymes, for example, bromelain, which is an enzyme that comes from pineapple that can help, uh, the chondroitin products. Those are all useful in different ways. And then we can also replace some of the anti-inflammatory medications with Boswellia, uh, Cordalis is a Chinese herbal that I love. Um, it's fairly inexpensive for the large dogs. It's not only an anti-inflammatory, but it's also an analgesic. So it works at um, the uh, individual's perception of the pain, not just the inflammation. Um, also one of my favorites is the essential oils. I love incorporating in massage and using essential oils with it. Copaiba um, is a sap from a tree in the Amazon and it has um, a natural chemical constituent called beta caryophylline and that's very anti-inflammatory and i can layer the oils put a little in my hand massage that on the affected area then i can even put other oils on top of that like wintergreen mm -hmm. um, that's uh, contains salicylic acid that's where aspirin came from so um, doing things that are pleasant that the pet parent can do at home um, is also a great tool in our toolbox that we can teach pet parents to be involved and proactive with managing something that's a long-term chronic problem. Yeah, and to those uh, oils, I would add Melissa and black spruce mm -hmm. as uh, uh, also. Um, they're very powerful. Um, but I even um, start with arthritis, if you will. You mentioned puppies, which I think is important, is to start the process of thinking about arthritis and prevention of arthritis very early. And now that we know that fat and extra uh, fat deposition is the largest endocrine gland in the body and secretes mostly pro-inflammatory um, hormones. We now know that fat and extra uh, weight drives the creation of our steelarthritis, or at least we found a connection. Um, and so what we wanna do with regards to arthritis and be more proactive is actually prevent it. And so one of the ways which we can do that is emphasize uh, fitness 
throughout the life of the animal to minimize that. That's one proactive way in my mind that we can uh, approach it. We incorporate a lot of fish oil in our practice. Uh, start as puppies. Uh, there's a lot of evidence that it not only helps with cognitive development in puppies, uh, but helps with the oxidative damages that are going to occur because they're so hyperactive mm -hmm. and they're going to extend those joints. Right. And that, that fish oil uh, is an omega-3 and that's very anti-inflammatory. Right. We need that omega-3, 6, 9 balance. Um, a lot of people think that coconut oil is a replacement exactly. for fish oil, yeah. and, and not at all. Um, that can actually be pro-inflammatory, right. and that's not a bad thing. We need both, but right. we need that balance, that yeah. yin and the, and the yang. Right, and yeah, a lot of times, like when a, um, a pet owner is supplementing a product, they want to like give as much as they can. They might over supplement, and if you're, mm -hmm. if you actually you are supplementing with an omega six, you could induce inflammation. I do, I deal with that a lot with cancer patients, like. Finally, when they're being diagnosed with cancer is when they get started on some of these products and omega-6 fatty acids can contribute to that inflammatory process so it could contribute to inflammation that's gonna promote cancer and arthritis. As a Chinese medicine practitioner, I also look at arthritis from the Chinese medicine perspective and it's a disease where you have too much heat energy in the body so we wanna to try to quiet down some of that heat and part of the way I do that is with nutrition, having the food be moist, having the food be fresh like you would eat yourself, having the food contain cooling protein sources like turkey, like fish, like other fowl, duck, pheasant, goose, or neutral protein sources like pork or beef, staying away from chicken and more gamey, stewy meats like lamb and bison and buffalo and goat and things like that. Um, but there's things you can do from a Chinese medicine perspective like with acupuncture, um, you, can, you can try to tonify kidney health, kidneys, kidney deficiency in Chinese medicine contributes to problems like arthritis. I very commonly am injecting, um, doing aquapuncture treatments where we're injecting B12 diluted or injecting liquids that promote joint health like polysulfate glycosamine glycan, um, which is gr a clear liquid that comes from sterilized cow tracheal cartilage that actually could be injected even into the joint and it is in large animals injected into joints or intravenously, but in dogs it's kinda, we're not probably gonna inject into their vein where we can inject into the muscle and it's absorbed and it goes right to the joint within two hours. So I've had so many success stories where maybe we still need to use medications on occasion to help with inflammation. We can really reduce the need reduce the frequency and the dose, and so therefore we spare some of the side effects, the gut side effects, the kidney liver side effects, the blood clotting side effects of anti-inflammatories. So really, like anytime your pet is diagnosed with arthritis, start of thinking about how we can try to use less medication. Mm -hmm. And um, you had mentioned too about arthritis can be an immune-mediated disorder, yes. so you need to think back, what are the unnatural things that you're feeding or that your pet is exposed to that could be stimulating that immune-mediated problem in the first place? Um, and I always go back to the nutrition and the inflammation that's caused by the starches and the sugars in the food. So sometimes just getting them onto the raw meat-based balanced type of diet will often correct some of the immune-mediated types of problems. Um, you talked about um, uh, exercise and um, weight. Um, the one, there's so many different uh, modalities that we can throw at an arthritis problem. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the main ones that gets forgotten is swimming. Yes. And right. I had an arthritic Absolutely. dog, um, and, and you have a, you're fortunate to be near the ocean, so you can <laughs> take your dog well, the in the ocean. The ocean's cold but, here, uh, so. Yeah, it is, uh, <laughs> um, in Wisconsin, uh, we were really lucky to have a facility right down the road that was for dog swimming. Mm -hmm. The underwater treadmills uh, have become very popular. There are a lot more facilities now that offer that. Um, but that can be pretty pricey. And if you can find a place to take your dog, even just for regular swimming for an arthritic problem, um, you don't necessarily need to have a lot of expensive rehab for that. Uh, it's just keeping the, keeping the joints moving. And a great way to do that, especially in the winter time and when it's icy and snowy and you can't get that arthritic dog outside, is to find a place where you can take them swimming. And that can really be a lot of fun. It's, it's something that makes them happy at the same time. So good for them, yeah. I mean, just getting the lymphatics flowing, getting the blood flowing, really getting the, driving the blood to the inflamed joint is crucial to deliver nutrients, to remove um, metabolic waste, to help to get the joint more lubricated and feeling better. I mean, if you, if you, I have arthritis, and sometimes when I get up, I'm like, uh, I have to kind of work through things, and as I get moving, things get better. Mm -hmm. So keeping your pet up and moving, like exercise, I'm so glad you brought up exercise, and when we want to think about exercise too, it shouldn't be traumatic exercise, it shouldn't be mm -hmm. ball fetching and 
frisbee frisbee catching should be walking nice consistent walking very good maybe doing a little hiking as well I, I, where i live in los angeles we have lots of great canyon hikes on leash of course to avoid the potential for rattlesnakes but get your dog moving do a little incline get them challenging get challenged and actually a physical therapy facility that i work with very commonly in la offers just swimming opportunities for dogs like maybe you can't afford the full regimen of of the whole physical therapy package but you could afford to have your dog come and swim with a physical therapist twice a week or if you are in los angeles and you have a pool you can be taught how to do physical therapy at home actually any owner can do physical therapy at home with their pet and that's where like if your dog has that arthritis diagnosis get the physical therapy consultation learn what you can do at home just to get your pet um, in a regular state of activity at home and also make your home pet safe put traction down on floors, mm -hmm. make sure your pet is not slipping up and down stairs, block the stairs off if needed, lower the human bed or not let them up on the human bed, get and have them lay on their nice orthopedic cushion bed next to your bed, make your pet home safer. I also love toe grips, which slide <laughs> onto nails, um, silicone rings, which help to give them more traction, sometimes mm -hmm. foot covers as well. I'm always very cautious with foot covers because of the potential tourniquet effect that they can have on the foot mm -hmm. or moisture that accumulates on the skin surface. I also mm -hmm. suggest nail trim so that the, the feet are not like this, so the paw pads are on the ground, and trimming the hair on the underside of the paw, yeah. too. I see so many older dogs sliding around on the floor, so proper grooming is an important part of arthritis management, too. Yeah. There's so many different aspects of it. Yeah. And, you were, and you mentioned diagnosis, a proper early diagnosis. Mm -hmm. A lot of people with the large breed dogs assume that their dog has hip issues when it has weakness on the hind end, sure. and a lot of times it isn't the hips, it's actually that lumbosacral area. Right. And if we're going to use a modality like acupuncture or laser, uh, the more uh, pinpointed we have been with that diagnosis, the more effective we can be with the treatment. And, and before we leave the subject, and if <laughs> I want to keep talking are, about it. Uh, <laughs> oh. uh, I'd like to also bring up another prevention uh, tool that most holistic uh, veterinarians uh, partake in, and that is decreasing vaccines. And since vaccines are in, intended to increase inflammation to uh, protect from serious diseases, uh, the uh, practice of over vaccinating can actually cause too much inflammation and fuel this very problem that we're talking about now. So I think uh, looking again holistically, one of the things that we can do to help our pets is vaccinate strategically and not necessarily regularly and perform vaccine antibody right. titers. A simple blood test to see what your pet's immunity is from the prior vaccination. Mm -hmm. If it's at a, a protective threshold, your pet will probably be fine. We don't want to like thrust your pet into the pit of distemper and parvo and <laughs> feline leukemia and FIP and such. But we want to like think about if the blood has a sufficient protective level, the pet will most likely be protected if exposed. But do the titers, I, do, I titer my patients annually. Um, so we, I'm so fortunate that I'm able to do that because I've been having had my own pet who suffered from four episodes of immune mediated hemolytic anemia. I wasn't going to continue to vaccinate him when I could trigger his body to destroy his red blood cells. We'd go down that awful spiral of transfusion and immunosuppression and hospitalization. It's terrible to, to have to go through that with your pet. So annual vaccine antibody titers are a great holistic wellness practice that can potentially reduce your pet's need to be unnecessarily vaccinated. Mm -hmm. We started titer testing probably about 20 years ago. Um, we work with Dr. Schultz at the University of Wisconsin-Madison and he's been out in the forefront of um, explaining to dog owners as well as veterinarians right. um, that we don't have to vaccinate as frequently as we are. Um, but we've, what we've learned about titer testing is that you can look at how high the numbers are on that original titer and usually the fastest they fall each year is in half, which many of them hold even better than that. So you can almost sort of extrapolate that if the titers are really high, uh, you could probably skip a year or two of doing those titers and, and save those pet parents some money on doing that too. Well, as you can see, a lot of great information, a lot of great tips, and a lot of things that you can be doing at home. Take note, work with an expert. Thanks for joining us here on Natural Pets TV. Hey everybody, a lot of great information, a lot of great discussion going on here, and we wanna keep that going in the comment section down below. Now don't forget, you should subscribe to this channel because we've got more great guests, more great episodes coming throughout the year, so please subscribe. And if you wanna find out more information about our guests, I'm gonna tell you how right now, Dr. Ken can be found at thewelldog.com. Dr. Jody at drjodysnaturalpets.com and Dr. Patrick at patrickmahaney.com. And as always, you can reach out to us at Pet World Insider. All right, folks, thanks for joining us.
We'll see you soon.